What's up guys, have you ever had that feeling of imposter syndrome? I know I have. I'd have that feeling every time I'd show up to a bike race or a fast group ride. Now all that changed for me this last year when I took my second podium finish in the longest single day bike race in America, Lodoja. This race is 202 miles with about 8,900 feet of climbing and you're typically aiming to get something under 10 hours. Now to do so, you're having to find all kinds of mental tricks to push through physical barriers out on the race course. That's where Alex Hutchinson's Endure was a huge asset for me as I sought my second podium finish. You've gotta understand where I'm coming from. I'm a bigger guy for a cyclist, six foot, 185. I definitely stand out at some of these bike races. And to compete against guys who have the traditional cyclist build, I've gotta train much, much harder from a physical perspective. And from a mental perspective, I have to get over the fact that I'm 20, 30, sometimes 40 pounds heavier than the guys I'm racing against. Come back in time with me to 2018, the first time I did this race. My goal was very simple. I just wanted to break 10 hours. Simple math, 202 miles, 10 hours. That meant I needed to average 20 miles an hour for 10 hours straight to meet my goal. So how did I do? Well, I crossed the finish line in 10 hours, 14 minutes for 19th in my group at an average speed of 19.76 miles an hour. Definitely not my goal. Fast forward to 2019, same race, same group, except now I've got experience and I trained even harder leading up to the race. So how did I do? Well, I finished even slower. I came in at 1016, I finished 23rd in my group. My average speed was 19.71 miles an hour. 2020, same race, same category, except now I've got this huge chip on my shoulder because I've essentially failed the last two years out on the race course. I start the year out thinking I'm gonna go for sub 10 again. And then I read Endure by Alex Hutchinson and it absolutely changes my perception of what is possible on the race course. So there I am in the summer of 2020 listening to Endure, jotting down notes, rewinding the audiobook, starting to create kind of this plan of mental hacks and things that I can do to get me through this race and allow me to be at peak performance. I'm reading things like, you judge what's sustainable based on not only how you feel, but on how that feeling compares to what you expected to feel at that point in the race. And so I realize that I can mentally train myself. I can mentally prepare myself for all of these obstacles that are going to come up in this race. So I start to think to myself, should I really be focused on getting sub 10 for breaking 10 hours? Or should I be focused on actually getting to the podium? What's actually physically possible? 2020, I roll up to the start line with physical strength as well as mental strength from all the mental training that I had been doing. This time, instead of getting dropped at mile 60 or 70, I stay with the leaders all the way to the end of the race. In fact, I was dropped three times from miles 165 to mile 185. Each time I clawed my way back, making solo bridges back up to the leaders. So how did it end? Well, this year I ended in nine hours, 30 minutes, Good enough for third place with an average of, I think, around 21.6, 21 and a half miles an hour. This year, I took a more relaxed approach to physical training and focused more on mental training. I developed daily habits and routines and a full race week mental plan that I felt would help propel me to the podium once again. This year, I finished the race in nine hours, 26 minutes, which is a personal best. Good enough for fifth place, which thankfully is a podium spot at this race. What's interesting is that when I got to the start line this year, I was six to eight pounds heavier and I had trained less than I had in years prior. But for whatever reason, that really didn't matter to me. See, that imposter syndrome that I had was starting to fade and I was starting to mentally feel like I could actually compete at a high level at this race. What was the big difference between 2018, 2019, and 2020, 2021? It was all right here. See, if effort is perceived, then we can manipulate that perception of the effort that we're putting out. And so in my case, after reading Endure, I felt like I had this toolbox of tools that helped me mentally break down the physical barriers that I encountered in this race. I spent more time giving myself pep talks and walking through worst case race scenarios and how I would respond. What would happen if I got cramps, which I did at mile 80, and I had to push through them for the next 120 miles? What if it rained, which it did for the first 45 miles? You see, I'm a firm believer that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. When the leaders pulled away from me at mile 180, I clawed my way back because I knew that I could. I'd already run through the scenario in my head. When things got really difficult, I realized that the mental trick 
was to disconnect my bike computer and put it in my jersey pocket. So I stopped worrying about the numbers and just focused on the task at hand and how I could mentally get through the physical exhaustion that I was experiencing. When things got really, really difficult in the race, I was reminded of this particular quote from Endure. Just like a smile or frown, the words in your head have the power to influence the very feelings they're supposed to reflect. So when things got really difficult, what would I do? I think about my wife, I think about my kids, I think about how excited they would be to be on the podium once again. I'd sing a happy song, I'd think of happy thoughts. It sounds so cheesy, but you know what? It works. Look, if you're an endurance athlete, this book is gonna resonate with you really well. But even if you're just going through a physical trial or some kind of trial in your life, Endure has all kinds of stories and information and tools that will help you think of these problems and approach them from a different perspective. I can't recommend this book enough. It has truly transformed the way that I think about physical and mental challenges. Go grab it on Amazon, download it from Audible, check it out from the library, Barnes and Noble, if that's even still a thing. Let me know your thoughts on this book. If you've learned anything, drop a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.